Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Tony Blair weighed into the Brexit debate again today, this time to lambast Jeremy Corbyn, opining that the Labour Party will pay a heavy price for the leadership's closet Euroscepticism. He said that Labour is now in the worst of both worlds, neither appealing to lead nor remain voters. The former Prime Minister speaks as an ardent pro-EU campaigner who wants to see the 2016 referendum reversed, so no surprise that he remains critical of Labour's position that the vote should be respected with no second referendum. But what about his view that Labour is in the worst of both worlds? The party's formal position, formulated in February, is that the UK would leave the customs union but then negotiate a treaty that would do the work of the customs union. But that's not the unanimous view of Labour MPs. Our political editor, uh, Nick Watt, is here. Uh, Nick, what's actually happening? Well, the debate in the Labour Party is being framed by the prospect of the return to the House of Commons of the EU withdrawal bill. Now, that was amended 15 times in the, in the Lords. The government will seek to overturn most, though not all, of those amendments. And the two key ones for the Labour Party are, first, the requirement on the government to report back on the steps it is taking to join a customs union, and the leadership of the Labour Party is in favour of a customs union. And the second one is that the bill cannot come into force unless the government joins the European Economic Area, which is essentially the single market, and Tony Blair's supporters they're in favour of that one. So where's it all lining up? Well, the leadership supports a customs union because they believe that that gives the ability for a tariff-free movement of goods, but it would allow the UK to have a say in trade deals that the EU would assign around the world. The leadership is opposed to the European Economic Area uh, membership. They say that that would lead to free movement. It would mean that the UK would be subject to the rules of the single market, so the UK would be a rule taker, not a rule maker. And interestingly, there are support Supporters, uh, sorry, opponents of Jeremy Corbyn, people like Kevin Jones and John Mann, who agree with him on this. They say it would be a death sentence for Labour to go along with that. But there are trade unionists and some fans of Jeremy Corbyn in the shadow cabinet who are seeing, saying that Labour should support membership of the EEA. That's the best way of preserving jobs. Thank you. Well, I'm joined now by the Labour MP, Caroline Flint, Flint, who broadly supports Labour's position and wants us to leave the single market and the customs union. Also, fellow MP Owen Smith is still holding out for another referendum. Good evening to both of you. Hello. Uh, are you clear on Labour's position, Owen? Yes, I think the front bench position is that we should be in a customs union and we should have a close, strong relationship with the single market. But I think that is, to some extent, uh, a fudged position. Uh, and I think, unfortunately, the country will see that. And I think we need to be much clearer with people about the sort of trades off we're prepared to accept. And in my view, if we're to retain a strong manufacturing base, if we are to make sure that we uh, don't have a hard border in Ireland and preserve mm. peace and prosperity, and if we are to remain, uh, I think, a leading nation in the world, then we need to stay in the customs union and the single market. Stay in the single market, meaning free movement? I think if you stay in the single market on the current rules, yes. If we stayed, for example, in the it went into the well, EEA... Well, you're never going to get free movement past well, if you went uh, in, Jeremy Corbyn. If you went into the EEA, then Articles 112 and 113 of the EEA Treaty say that you can have a safeguard mechanism that allows you to stop free movement. However... You're, you're, la you're laughing, laughing, Caroline Flint. You're clear. laughing, Caroline Flint. You, you, you believe this is pie in the sky. Look, um, if we're leaving the European Union, then we cannot be in the single market nor in the customs unit as it currently stands. And don't forget Norway... The is part of the widened EEA area, which was widened to suit Norway, Liechtenstein um, uh, and, and Iceland, they are not in the customs union whilst they're in the single market. And, the and truth, they accept the EEA. Yeah, and they accept, and they accept the, uh, the freedom of movement thing. But the truth is, this negotiation is going to have to come up with a deal that is bespoke for the UK, I have no but, doubt but, of that. But let's be clear, no, what, what we're talking about with the withdrawal bill and these two mm, amendments. Mm. Now, the leadership is saying, you know, Vote, they vote for a customs union. But you don't want a customs union. No, no, I actually think if we can negotiate... A different customs union. A, diff a customs relationship, then I think that's something to think about because that's part of what works with other countries too. What well, I hang am on, clear what sectors would you want to have what, this relationship to exist? For, what well, 
I mean, let me give you an example. Yes. Uh, if you think about the uh, car industry in a sector like that, that if you like brokers, parts of cars that travel across Europe to different areas, that might be an area it should be where we can come to an arrangement. And the truth is, there are companies in other parts of the European Union right now who are lobbying in their countries to say, look, the UK is important to us, you've got to get a deal. And we'll go to the wire on this, but there will be a deal. But you cannot have a situation where we... I think uh, are disrespectful to the vote of the referendum, which is to say basically uh, we want everything that we've got now, which means we're not leaving, and therefore people should be honest about that. They don't want us to leave, and that's why they're saying okay. we have to well, be in the single market and in the customer. Well, market. let's look at the uh, European economic area, which you support. The leadership is against uh, voting for that amendment. Will you be voting for the European economic area? Yes. So you'll be defying the leadership, defying the whip? Yes. And what do you think will happen to you after that? Uh, well, I, I suspect very little. I've already been sacked from the shadow cabinet <laughs> and I would have thought there'd be quite a few people who'd be prepared to, uh, to vote as I vote. But let's not get hung up on the EEA. I think the key thing that we've got to be honest with people about is if we want to have frictionless trade and mm -hmm. protect jobs, we've got to stay in the single market or very close but, but, to it but, but, and the customs. But you, you talk about reflecting the, you know, what people want. The truth of the matter is that Labour voted for Brexit. You were actually defying. No, you didn't. <laughs> but the majority of people in Wales did. You are you are against the popular vote in Wales. Well, fifty four percent of people in my constituency voted to remain, um, and I think increasingly people right across Wales and across the rest of the country. We saw in Northern Ireland just this week a new poll suggesting that only thirty one percent of people there now support leave. So I think opinions are changing. Okay. And well, crucially, I, I, we've just got sorry. to be plain with people about the choices I, they I, face. Sorry, Owen. I, I actually don't think there's much evidence that opinions are, are changing really. In the referendum campaign, a majority voted leave. Forty percent of remain voters in that campaign also wanted changes to freedom of movement. So just on the issue of freedom of movement there is a far bigger majority for that to change but, but, than was reflected you voted, in just the in-out. You, vote, you voted to remain, yeah. uh, but you vote, you vote, in, in your constituency yeah. it was a leave vote. Yes, but, they didn't, but, but, but it wasn't clear what kind of leave. You seem to be oh, going whole hog. No, no, no. I, no that, I think that's wrong, Kirsty. I can remember as a Remain campaigner saying to people, we wouldn't be able to be in the single market, uh, we wouldn't be able to be in the customs union, and also on the lines from the Remain campaign was to emphasise that we didn't want to be like well, Norway. I, I, just and that's what I said. Briefly, that's what very briefly, very briefly, it was a situation said. with Labour, this, this coalition of, you know, the people in the north have voted to leave, the people in the south have voted to remain, and Labour somehow going to try and knit them together. That's an impossibility, isn't it? That Tony Blair's right about that. I suspect it is, which is why the only real answer, the only way we solve this is we put it back to the people in a people's vote uh, should, in order to uh, ratify quick, the deal when we know what the real uh, should, deal should, looks should like. Tony Blair, you were a Blairite, right, but should Tony Blair butt out now? I, I think Tony Blair is wrong on this. The people do not want a second referendum. I think we're going to have to try and get the best deal we can and also think about the sort of policies that we should have been thinking about for many years to increase skills and increase our productivity. Thank you both very much Thank indeed. You.